Welcome to the tutorial on the FRAX Fracture Risk Assessment Tool for Healthcare Professionals brought to you by Osteoporosis Canada. My name is Dr. Adrian Lau and I am an endocrinologist based in Toronto and a member of Osteoporosis Canada's Scientific Advisory Council. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to access the FRAX tool online, explain what FRAX is, what it does, who uses FRAX and when to use it, assess the different risk factors of the FRAX tool online, and discuss how to interpret the results of the FRAX tool. FRAX is a tool that has been developed to evaluate the fracture risk of patients. Healthcare professionals use the FRAX tool when making treatment decisions with their patients. To access the FRAX tool, you can type FRAX into your search engine. You can access the FRAX tool from their website here or through Osteoporosis Canada's webpage on FRAX. If you are brought to the FRAX homepage, it may look like this. Click on the Calculate Now button to get to the FRAX calculation tool. Alternatively, your search engine may also bring you directly to the FRAX calculation tool. The FRAX tool is used globally. To ensure that you are using the correct tool, please go under Continent and select North America. Subsequently, go to Country and select Canada. Here is a QR code for quick access to the FRAX calculation tool. The FRAX calculation tool is based on individual patient models that integrate the risks associated with clinical risk factors as well as bone mineral density at the femoral neck. Here is a list of risk factors incorporated into the FRAX tool. Let us put the FRAX tool in use by going through a sample case. In this sample case, we have a 76-year-old woman with a past medical history of type 2 diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis. She is presently taking metformin and methotrexate. She is currently not taking any prednisone. However, she has had to take several courses of prednisone in the past for flares of her rheumatoid arthritis. She was taking prednisone for about four months in the past year at a dose of up to 20 milligrams daily. With regards to her fracture history, she sustained a left wrist fracture three years ago from a fall from standing height. She is a non-smoker and consumes one glass of wine per day. There is a family history of a hip fracture in her mother at the age of 75. Let us go through the different risk factors in the FRAX tool. The first two risk factors are the patient's age and sex. The model can accept ages between 40 and 90 years. With regards to sex, click on male or female as appropriate. Please note that this should be chosen based on the patient's biologic sex as opposed to their gender. Next is the patient's weight and height. The patient's weight can be entered in kilograms or pounds, and the height can be entered in centimeters or inches. Click here if you want to use pounds and inches instead of kilograms and centimeters. For our case, we will enter in her information into the FRAX tool. Sometimes you will find this information on top of the bone mineral density report or printout. With regards to previous fractures, we are considering low trauma fragility fractures in the patient's adult life. Fractures that are considered traumatic fractures will not be counted here. For example, fractures sustained from a fall from greater than standing height, or fractures that occurred due to an accident at speeds greater than walking speed would not be considered fragility fractures. We also take note of which bone was broken. Fractures of the head and neck, hands, feet, and ankle are typically not considered to be fragility fractures. There is data that suggests low trauma rib and patella fractures may increase future fracture risk. At my institution, we do not account for rib or patella fractures in the FRAX tool, but we'll make a mention of them in a report with a statement such as, fracture risk may be increased due to a reported history of rib or patella fracture. Clinical judgment is recommended. We know that not all fractures are the same. Fragility fractures of the hip or the spine are particularly strong risk factors for future fractures. 
Also, fractures within the past two years and history of multiple fragility fractures are strong risk factors for subsequent fractures. As the site of fractures, timing of the fractures, and the number of fractures are not accounted for in the FRAX questionnaire, the fracture risk will be underestimated in those with hip or spine fractures, multiple fragility fractures, or recent fractures. In our case, our patient had a left wrist fracture from a fall from standing height. This is considered a fragility fracture, and we will click on Yes for previous fracture in the FRAX tool. With regards to parental hip fracture, we ask if the patient's mother or father have had a hip fracture. There is one study that suggests if the parent's hip fracture occurred after the age of 80, then this family history may not be a significant contributor to the patient's fracture risk. However, given the lack of more data on this and the difficulties in establishing the exact age of the parental hip fractures, my institution considers parental hip fractures at any age. In our case, our patient's mother had a hip fracture. Hence, we will click yes for this risk factor. Current smoking is another risk factor that can affect one's fracture risk. However, we do understand that smoking may have a dose-dependent effect on fracture risk. Also, effects of smoking may attenuate after cessation. Hence, clinical judgment should be used for low or high exposures to smoking or recent cessation of smoking. Also, habits such as smokeless tobacco, vaping, and the use of cannabis products should not be considered for this FRAX risk factor. Our patient is a lifetime non-smoker, and hence we leave this as no for current smoking. Glucocorticoid use is another risk factor that can impact fracture risk. For the FRAX tool, we consider the use of prednisone at a dose of 5 mg per day for three months in the past year to be a significant risk factor. Again, glucocorticoid use is a dose-dependent risk factor. Hence, clinical judgment should be used if one steroid dose is lower or higher. For our patient, although she is presently not on glucocorticoid therapy, she has been on prednisone for four months in the past year. We know that her dose was as high as 20 mg daily. Assuming that her dose was at least 5 mg daily for three months over the past year, we will click on Yes for glucocorticoids. The next item in the questionnaire is rheumatoid arthritis. If the patient has a confirmed diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, then we select Yes. Please note that this question is only for rheumatoid arthritis and not for osteoarthritis or other forms of rheumatologic diseases. As our patient has a confirmed diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, we will select yes here. The next item is secondary osteoporosis. This refers to any disorder that is strongly associated with osteoporosis or bone loss. The FRAX website offers a list of these conditions here. However, do note that the secondary osteoporosis risk factor does not impact the FRAX calculation if we have the bone mineral density available. Another list that you can use is the one found in Appendix 1 of the 2023 Osteoporosis Canada Clinical Practice Guideline. Please use your clinical judgment with regards to particular conditions that may not be listed in either of these lists. For our patient, she has type 2 diabetes, which was found on Osteoporosis Canada's list of secondary causes of osteoporosis. Hence, we will click Yes for this item. Please note that if our patient only had rheumatoid arthritis in her past medical history, we would not click Yes for secondary osteoporosis, as rheumatoid arthritis is a significant risk factor and is accounted for as its own item in the questionnaire. For alcohol intake, we consider three units of alcohol daily to be a significant risk factor. The definition of standard drinks are listed here. Similar to smoking, alcohol use is a dose-dependent risk factor. Please use clinical judgment for different amounts of alcohol intake. For our patient, she consumes one glass of wine per day. This is equivalent to one unit of alcohol per day, which is not a significant risk factor in this algorithm. 
Lastly, we can enter in our patient's bone mineral density at the femoral neck. For patients who have not yet had a bone mineral density test performed, this field can be left blank. If we do have the patient's bone mineral density available, we can either enter their femoral neck T-score or femoral neck bone mineral density in gram per centimeter squared. The different brands of DXA machines are listed here. Alternatively, we can select T-score and use the patient's T-score at the femoral neck. Note that the T-scores should be based on the NHANES reference values for women aged 20 to 29, even for male patients. If you are unsure that your male patient's T-scores are based on the NHANES female database, it would be safer to enter in the DXA brand and the bone mineral density in gram per centimeter squared. For our patient, her bone mineral density was performed on a GE lunar machine. Her bone density at the femoral neck is 0.689 gram per centimeter squared, and I will enter this here. Next, click on the Calculate button, and the fracture risk assessment will be performed. After we click on Calculate, we are provided with a 10-year probability of fracture for major osteoporotic fracture and for hip fracture. It is the 10-year probability of major osteoporotic fracture that we use for clinical decision-making with the 2023 Osteoporosis Canada Guideline. As previously mentioned, the secondary osteoporosis risk factor will not affect the FRAX calculation if we have the bone mineral density data entered. Here, if we try to calculate the FRAX with secondary osteoporosis click to yes on the left and no on the right, there is no impact on the FRAX calculations. We can take her 10-year fracture risk and apply it to the treatment algorithm of the Osteoporosis Canada guideline to help us make treatment decisions. As mentioned previously, we use a 10-year probability of major osteoporotic fracture. FRAX also offers the FRAX Plus tool, which can further adjust the FRAX calculation based on additional risk factors, which are listed here. However, there is a cost with using FRAX Plus, whereas the use of the standard FRAX calculation tool is free. I would like to end this presentation with some important summary remarks. FRAX is a useful tool that can help us estimate someone's fracture risk based on a patient's risk factors. Accuracy of the FRAX calculation will depend on the accuracy of the information that is input into the algorithm. Many questions have a dichotomous yes-no option, which may be limiting and may underestimate the fracture risk. For example, we can indicate if our patient has had a fragility fracture or not in the past. However, FRAX does not allow us to indicate the number of fractures, timing of the fractures, or the bones that were broken. The risk factors of smoking, alcohol intake, and glucocorticoid use are dose-dependent risk factors. Again, we can only answer in a yes or no fashion. Hence, clinical judgment should be used in these situations. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope that you found this tutorial on the FRAX tool useful. I will leave with you some resources including links to Osteoporosis Canada's homepage, the FRAX calculation tool, and the 2023 Osteoporosis Canada Clinical Practice Guideline.